Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review, we are looking at the Jada Mega Man Iceman release, which is probably the least good of the three. I saved him for last. He is least and last, but still a very solid release. No problem, no real problem at all. Just maybe isn't, maybe isn't quite up to snuff with the other guys. And I'm maybe guessing that that's how they save their budget for the other guys a little bit, but still, a strong one, so don't fret, don't worry, it's still good, just might not be as good, but still solid. So let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a closer look. Alrighty, let's take a quick look at my package before we get into the review. Nice packaging, basically the same as all the other ones, except it's character specific. This is a different thing than what we got, so maybe another accessory, we'll see when we get to the accessory section, would have been nice, but good packaging, still very nice. Jade is kind of firing on all cylinders on every release. They're doing everything they need to to uh, establish themselves as an action figure company in addition to making little metal cars. All right, this guy stands roughly about four and an eighth inches tall. He's a little bit shorter. I'll have photos at the end comparing him to the other guys in the wave. Uh, it's just shy of 10 and a half centimeters and here he is up against the Marvel Legends figure. So scaling wise, I'm pretty sure they're solidly in the 112 scale, just the way they need to be. So that's good. All right, question of the day. I asked this in the Fireman review. I'll ask it again in case you guys aren't watching all of them. Are you guys all in on this line? Which ones are you buying? How many of them are you buying? Like not doubles. I mean like how many characters are you willing to go deep? Or are you just getting Mega Man? Or what are you doing? What are your thoughts? For me, all in. All right, aesthetically speaking, it's fine. Oops. Um, it doesn't have as much going on as the other ones. There is some shading on his blue in here, it looks like, but there's no shading really anywhere else. So it has a little bit less of a nice look to it than the other ones. It's still solid. The whites are still glossy. The blue is still satin. It has a nice finish to it, looks good. The details that are there are painted nicely. And they're obviously there. Like in the first place, they could have easily been omitted. Even the elbow pads are done, the little strap on the head. It's done nicely, it's just not quite as good as the other ones. But they were done exceptionally well, so that's okay. The details on the face, very clean. Not perfect, but definitely within reason for the price point. There is some shading on the head, but it's very, very, very subtle. And it's not really noticeable from the front. So, yeah, it's not quite as premium a look as the other ones, which is interesting because they're $20 figures, but they do look premium. This doesn't quite have it, but it does look good, and the different finishes do help it to uh, stand out on the shelf. So I like it. I'll go uh, 9 out of 10, still at $20 price point, so it's solid, just maybe not as good. Now, as far as accessories go, we have the two heads. We have the head that comes on him that you already saw with the solid black eyes and the weird O face. I'm not sure why he has that face when he has this head that is for blowing, and it has the green in the eyes. So I don't know. I'm not like... I have some kind of black hole in my memory for Iceman. I don't remember anything about this character. So if you guys know why he's got two different eyes, uh, you can let me know about that. But still, nice alternate head for the hands. You have the two fist hands and then two other hands. That's fine. And then lastly, you get the display stand and the ice blowing effect. And that's really well done. I like it a whole bunch. Uh, but I do think the one that they showed on the packaging would be nice to have also. Uh, more effects is always good, but I think for 20 bucks, this is plenty. Alternate hands, effect parts, and an alternate head, that's, like, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying things that could be better, uh, but maybe aren't even reasonable at the price point. You get it? All right, accessory-wise, um, 9 out of 10, solid. I don't think he needs a whole lot more, but more would be nice. Now, as far as articulation goes, maybe 8 out of 10 for accessories is more fair. The head is on a ball peg, but it's very limited just due to the hood, so you're going to get some rotation, and that's mostly it. Shoulders work nicely. They go up just fine. Full rotation other than where the head is. Single jointed elbows, but you do get your rotation out of that. So that's plenty of range, really no problem at all. Wrists have a swivel and a hinge. The hinge probably useless, but it's there. Torso articulation on this guy, he does have it. It's underneath the belt, but you're not really gonna get much out of it. Just a little bit, mostly your rotation and that's it. So it's probably okay for this guy, but could could have more range, I suppose. This gets in the way too. Uh, legs go forward nicely, no problem there. They go back just a little bit, out to the side, full range. Thigh swivel, it's in there, no problem. Single jointed knee gets you 90 degrees and you do get rotation out of the bottom if you want it. 
Ankles on these guys, they go pretty far back, like almost all the way, that's really good. Going forward, I do think they need more range. It's not as helpful to pose this guy. And they did it to not have a gap here, but I think a little bit of a gap, I know for a fact, a little bit of a gap there goes a long way in bringing that foot forward. So that would have been nice. But they did paint the bottoms two tones, by the way, to make it look more realistic. Uh, very, very nicely done overall for the, articula for the articulation. It's not impressive, but it's certainly good enough. And so I'll give this guy for a $20 price point. Um, I'm going to say 8 out of 10. I think this one could have benefited from a little bit more range in the torso and the head. I think they could have done it. It's still an 8 out of 10. And at 20 bucks, I'm perfectly happy with it. But I think they could have done a little bit more. And I think all of them need a little bit better range in the ankles. But still, a very, very nice release. I would say it's the least good of the three, but still good and perfectly reasonable for the price point. So I'm going to give this guy an overall rating of 8 out of 10. Uh, I'm just thrilled with this line of figures from Jada. And same thing with the Street Fighter. They are proving that everything I've been saying for all these years about Hasbro and all these other companies that don't put out good products, that it's all true. You can do so much more. And everything that they say that justifies what they're doing is just BS. It's just excuses. A little toy metal car company is making better action figures than Hasbro, who's been making Marvel Legends for 20 years now. I don't. When did they get the license? Was it 2007? I don't remember. Anyway, it's um, it's a shame, really. But uh, it's great for Jada and great for us because we're getting good figures now. So that's really cool. Okay. So uh, very, very pleased with this line. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. But that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you should. I normally have videos every day but Wednesday. Uh, I'll get back to that soon. And I do have thousands of videos already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.